Hey, what's up everyone? It's Sean from Tech Babblers, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Sony Xperia Z1S from T-Mobile. So let's get started. To begin with, I'll talk about the specs since most of you actually do enjoy hearing what your device is powered by. So to begin with, it's powered by a Snapdragon 800 quad-core processor running at 2.4 gigahertz. It has a 5-inch 1080p display, as you can see. Uh, it has a 20.7 megapixel camera on the back with a 2, two megapixel camera on the front. Uh, it comes with Android 4.3. As you know, it was released January of this year, which is 2014. It uses micro, micro SIM, not nano SIM, so it's the one that the iPhone 4, 4 and 4S uses. Uh, it has your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, micro, it does have a micro SD slot, even though I believe it comes in a 16 or 32 gig configuration. So for those of you that actually do like to, uh, have more storage, you can. Um, like I said, it has a 1080p display. It has all your bands as this phone for me, it's T-Mobile. So it has your 1700 AWS along with your 4G LTE, wherever it's available. So when we look at the front of the device, we have our 5-inch HD display. On the left side, we have our dock connector, our micro SD slot, our mini USB port. On the top, we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the right side, we have our SIM card slot, our power button, our up volume up and down button, our camera button. On the bottom, we have our speaker along with a keychain strap. And on the back, we have our 20.7 megapixel camera along with flash. You have, of course, NFC and your Sony Xperia logo along with carrier logo on the bottom. In this case, is T-Mobile. So when you unlock the device, you notice that there are no capacitive touch buttons, which plenty of older Android phones has, because this device, amongst many others, are taking the step of having all on-screen buttons, which are your home, menu, and back button. So to tell you a little about the device, um, I use the device around eight hours a day. I usually take it out of charge around seven o'clock in the morning, use it mostly throughout the day until about five o'clock in the afternoon. And then I usually put it to charge around nine or 10 at night. I have two email accounts synced about every five, 10 minutes. I'm constantly checking the web. I have um, notifications and stuff pulled in from weather apps. Like I said, email, social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I also listen to music the whole time with my headphones plugged in um, and I guess every now and then I snap a picture or two but not that often but when we're talking about pictures since it does have a 20.7 megapixel camera it's actually very good um, it's probably it's definitely better than a lot of cameras I've seen and for video quality it also seems to be very nice this is a video test of the Sony Xperia ZS1. Hopefully y'all will be able to get an idea of the exact quality of the video or the camera to be exact. As you can see, I'm in New York, so there's a lot of snow, but hopefully this justifies what you're looking for. For the OS, it's running Android 4.3 Jelly Bean, which means it's not on KitKat yet. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure when it'll have KitKat. I'm assuming since it is a recently released phone, which was like three months ago, probably less, since March hasn't started yet. So a month and a change for here in the US. I'm assuming we should get KitKat for this device very soon, but it has no problem running 4.3 at all. I mean. The only time you experience a little lag is if you're to uh, reset the device at all. Like if you're to restart it or power it off and power it on. <clears throat> when you power it on, after maybe like 
20, 30 seconds of lag. Like I'm talking, if you're to swipe, if you're to swipe around the home screen like this, like if you guys see how like smooth it is, when you actually try it, it stutters a lot. And also with that, every now and then the Sony bloatware, such as albums, movie, PlayStation Plus, music, Walkman, you know, they crash sometimes. And I don't think I've ever experienced something like that for a while. But it's not that much of a downfall. Maybe it'll crash one out of ten times with as soon as it crashing, if you close if you reopen it, it'll run just fine. And I mean I personally like the Sony UI as even though it is their own take on Android, to me it's not as I guess as much of a takeover of Android such as like Samsung or LG. In my opinion, I really like the the bottom buttons, the, the type on screen buttons, and I really like the the UI when you're multitasking. Also, they have like the app drawer is really nice, and then if you scroll to the left, you have like you can show apps in certain orders such as your own order, alphabetical, most used recently installed and then it has right there where you can get apps from the Play Store or Sony Select which I'm not sure what that is or you can even uninstall apps or search whereas on on like pure Nexus pure Android it it would be right here but I mean that's not big of a problem as you can see there this is the app drawer one thing though that that takes the experience away from me is over the device I don't know if the camera will be able to justify it but I guess it's for the waterproof that it has like kind of like a screen protector on both the front and back and it gets scratched and at first when I saw the scratches on the back I it, it, it took me all the way back to when I owned the iPhone 4 and 4s where when you would just put it in your pocket or like in your jacket pocket, you know, with keys, wallet, whatever, it would get scratched a lot. But here the scratches for me seem kind of deep. And at first I thought maybe it was like pocket lint from, and I tried wiping it away, but they're deep scratches. And I know it's not on the glass, but it being on a screen protector that you really can't peel off kind of makes me sad because I usually baby my devices and I can't really, I mean, I can slap another screen protector on it, but that kind of defeats the purpose of it, I'm assuming. And with the front, I don't have scratches on the front, but with the protector, it gives it weird viewing angles where when you're looking at it straight, it seems crisp and clear, but like, if you're to look at it from angles, the lighting is just weird. Like, right in the middle of the screen, it's really bright, but then it kind of like gets darker towards the edges and if you if you're looking at it from different angles you can't really you just won't be able to see anything that much and you have to have the brightness is usually cranked up high on this because if you lower it down with the extra coating it's just kind of a kind of harder to see things clear which I mean other devices that I've used Android devices I haven't had that issue such as on the Nexus 5 or HTC one or Samsung Galaxy S4 but it's not to take away from the device since it is pushed as a fully waterproof device that can like be thrown in water or you know stuff like that and speaking of the case of waterproof over each port you'll notice that it has flaps and if you open the flaps and you unlock your device it'll tell you that your device is waterproof and you have to close the flaps for waterproof to take into effect which is actually very nice because most people would probably forget to close a flap like if you plug it in the charger and you take out your charger in the morning you're not going to really think to close the flap unless, until it becomes like second nature and by them reminding you constantly that this phone is waterproof and you need to do that very nice <laughs> i give sony a thumbs up i'm not sure if the s4 active does that because i've never used one but overall i think this device is very nice and um if you're looking to get a sony device or even a high quality device, I definitely feel that feel like this uh, beats out the Galaxy S4 and possibly up there with the HTC One. 
If you're looking to replace your maybe iPhone 4S or 4 and you want the same feel but bigger and thinner, this is definitely what you're looking for. Uh, once, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. My name is Sean from Tech Babblers, and you can follow us on Facebook.com slash Tech Babblers. You can follow me on Twitter.com slash Sean Bottom Dash uh, You can visit our website at TechBabblers.com, which is where we usually carry the most important tech news of the day. We're not, we're not like other tech websites that just throw all the news. We only post the most important ones that we feel that everyone should know about for the day. And that's it. Hopefully you guys will, hopefully you guys did like the video and you'll continue watching my videos. Thanks.